Hey, Joe Gilder here. Today, I want to dive into two plugins you might not know that you have access to. If you're a Studio One subscriber, these should be in your account, uh, and you can install them for free with your subscription and check them out. So this is the VT1, and this is the RC500. If you don't have these, um, log into your account and search for the word channel. So under installed content, you can see it's called the Channel Strip Collection. Uh, if you don't see it under your installed content, then come over to available downloads and search for it. It'll show up here. It'll download and install. And then you've got them. They show up for me on the right-hand side as RC500 and VT1. What are these? Well, so these look a lot like a couple of pieces of analog hardware that I have um, that Personas used to make. They don't make them anymore called the, the ADL600 and the ADL700. The ADL700 is a tube channel strip that has a killer preamp and a four band EQ and a compressor built in. So it looks a lot like this one and the knobs look the same. So I'm taking a cue from that, that this is modeled after that. And then the RC 500 is a FET modeling channel strip. So the VT 100 is modeled after tube circuitry. The RC 500 is modeled after solid state FET circuitry. Both have their places. The RC 500 has fewer controls. VT one has more controls, which honestly is something I pay attention to more than even like the modeling is like how how much control do I have sometimes I want a lot of control sometimes I want very few options uh, and we have both available to us um, and by the way they both use the state space modeling which is a really cool technology that I being a knuckle dragger guitar player I don't completely understand but the the way I understand it is instead of the traditional like using like an impulse response of a piece of hardware to then capture that sound this state space modeling takes all the components of whatever that piece of electronic device is and models each of them. So you get a faithful recreation of every turn of the knob is faithfully doing what, well, this plugin's off, so it won't work. Every turn of the knob is faithfully doing what all those components would do um, versus like a one shot. Here's what this box sounds like, if that makes sense. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I just think whenever you see that in Studio One, it's using that technology, which I think is kind of cool. So let's jump into these. I want to use them on. Uh, the drum mix of this song. And so I'm going to start with the RC500. I've got nothing on the drum mix. I've taken all my drum bus processing. So we're going to see what we can do here with the RC500 first. So we got bypass knobs. Let me turn it on. We got bypass knobs on either side. So we'll start with both things off. And then what else do we have? We have attack and release threshold. Uh, no ratio. That's interesting. We have a preamp section with, I'm guessing that's an 80 hertz high pass filter. We'll have to check that. A polarity switch, a gain knob, and a master knob. I'm guessing gain of the preamp and then master, I would guess, coming after the compressor, if I had to guess. We can meter gain reduction or the output of the channel. That's interesting. And then we have a, four, a three band EQ. We can switch between a peaking EQ which means it's like the typical EQ with like when you boost, that's the highest point in the middle and it's boosting around it versus a shelf, which boosts everything above the frequency or a low shelf below the frequency. That's kind of cool. And then a mid band. There's no width control, no Q control. It's a pretty minimal approach. I kind of dig that. Um, and I also like the way it looks and I feel like sometimes the way it looks matters too. So let's just see, let's hit play and see what we've got. I'm gonna first check this to see what this does. I, I imagine it's cutting off the low end. Yes, that is a high pass filter. We don't need that for this drum mix. Um, but let's see, let's see what else we got. Let's first um, looks like the order is compressor first, then EQ. Some sometimes you have an option to switch the order. Doesn't look like we have that here. So let's just see. Let's just see what's happening. Oh, I had it a lot louder because I had that turned up. It looks like the default setting is about right here. Just curious what happens when I turn up this gain, just that alone. I'll turn the output down, but let's see. Interesting. I've used this before. I have, I've always kind of just skipped straight to the compressor and not mess with this. This is really interesting. So what do we know? This is modeling a FET circuit. FET microphones are super cool and warm and vibey. This is interesting. 
So matching the volume with the gain down and just turning up this master up, it gives me a, it's, it gives me some volume for sure. And that, that sounds nice already. But check out what happens when I crank the gain and then adjust the master to get the same volume. I'm, the tone to me felt very different. Oh, we're going to have to A-B this. Let's make a second one. All right, so uh, the f we'll put them in this order. The first one... No, we'll let the second one be the cranked one. And the first one will go back to the preamp kind of by where it was by default. So let's go open this one. I'm going to confuse myself, but this is totally worth it. Let's turn this one on. Set it back to its default settings. Let me dial this in. So that sounds pretty good. And then switch. The second one's still a little bit louder. Let me turn it down a little more. Let me open them separately. This will make it a little less confusing. And let's open this one separately. Okay. This is first and second. <laughs> this is getting off the rails, but it's fun. All right, let's go listen to the first one. And now the second one. It's probably hard on drums because if it was like a big, dense mix, we might hear more of what it's doing. Um, but that's cool. It, it struck me, even though they're pretty similar, it struck me as the one with the extra goose, the preamp all the way. It's got this thickness and this warmth without touching anything else. I like that a lot. That's cool. Now, it's certainly adding a lot of volume as well, so we want to be careful of that, but that's really interesting. It's like we ran it through a tube, like a, not a tube, but like a FET preamp. Um, I like that a lot. That's a cool start. Okay, so now let's um, let's see what's going on with the compressor. We don't have as many controls. I want to go fairly quick on the release. We'll start with a fast attack and then kind of work our way back. Let's see what happens. Here we go. And I can switch this to gain reduction to see what's happening with the compressor. The attack is way too fast. I don't like that. Let's go. Sometimes fast attack can be cool. A little too, a little too snappy. So let's just go slower and see what we got. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't love that. Um, it was, it wasn't fast enough. It gives it some snap. It's not my favorite sound. Um, Versus other like like the fat channel the the fat compressor I think does that better than this one's doing. All right, let's go check out the EQ. Uh, probably just gonna turn down at like four hundred. Maybe a shelf. Let's just make them shelves. Shelf down the low end a little bit. Let's do a peak at like 5k for the snare. That's cool. It's a little bit louder overall, but like I dig it. The compressor is the one I don't, I wish I had more control. And the fact that the preamp is probably feeding the compressor, which is probably why it's overly compressed because we cranked the pre. So it's probably not giving the compressor a fair shake. 
Um, and then you have to adjust the master, which is also kind of doubling as the output gain. That's a little convoluted and complicated, but even just, I'd be curious to put just this on like my mix bus or on all my buses just to kind of see like what it does. Um, that plus a little gentle like global EQ, this could be a cool piece for the main, the main output, um, which we don't have time to do today. All right, let's switch over to the VT1. Let's see what's going on there. All right, so the VT1, very similar looking. Now, this is based off a of tube channel circuitry, so whatever that means to you, because <laughs> it means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Let's check out the controls. Um, we have a high-pass filter that's adjustable. We can turn on and off. We've got gain and trim, which is what's on my... This is literally like the copy of my channel strip over here. We've got different impedance settings, which I don't have time to get into, but it really just changes kind of how hot the input is in the overall like sensitivity, sort of. Just a different, one of these will sound kind of better than the others, and I'll usually just roll with it. We got gain and trim, so there's the actual full-on preamp section. Compressor gives us threshold ratio, attack and release, um, and then a gain knob at the bottom. So the gain knob for this compressor section, which is cool, and we can turn that on and off. We can also switch the order, which is kind of cool to be able to do. We turn this on, the EQ goes first, turn it off, the compressor goes first. This is the main output for the whole system. Um... So if we wanted to like goose the input, we we could goose it here. There's only 10 dB of gain there. We could crank it here and then probably have to like adjust down over here. We'll play with that here in a second. And then four band EQ. Um, these are all same similar thing. We got two mid bands that are just set at a certain width. And then the high bands can either be peak or shelf. And they're shelf by default. EQ can be bypassed as well. So let's start, let's bypass the compressor, bypass the EQ. Let's just listen to the tone of it for a minute. So it's got a hotter, it's a hotter sound at A versus F. If we go to F and crank it. Feels brighter if we go to A and bring it back down. I don't know, I'm not gonna AB too much, but that the A feels a little nicer. So that little trick where I'm cranking the gain, which is ostensibly adding some saturation, then turning the trim down to compensate for the gain I added so we get the tone without a lot of extra volume. There's only 10 dB here versus a whole lot there, so there's only so much you can do there. Um, all right, let's play with the compressor. Let's see what it's got. Yeah, it gives me some nice tight punchiness. Still doesn't go super fast on the attack um, like the FET comp does, but I like it. It was it, the fastness of it that didn't like that sound. But when I let it a little bit slower, I like that a lot. It's got a big punchy low end to it. Um, and then EQ wise, I'm gonna probably find some mid range to pull out. And it's nice to have a dedicated EQ for about that 5K boost on the snare, which is always fun. And then the overall volume on the output. Love the amount of control that you have. Love the look of it. And the before and after. It's kind of cool. I will say, so my favorite things... I loved the way the RC500 sounded just with the preamp. That was kind of cool. And then I loved the control and the compressor and the overall functionality of the VT1 more. Um, but that's super interesting. So if you have access, if you are a subscriber, you have access to this, pull one in, do a mix using only this on every channel. Um, th that's a really fun way to learn. This may be amazing on like 
bass or vocals. It's hard to know without trying it on each one. But these are two in, two incredible tools um, that you have in your arsenal that um, I'm glad I remembered that these exist because I'm going to start messing around with those more on my own mixes. All right, that's it for me. My name is Joe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.